Oh, yeah, this is Billiam. I talk about a lot of things I grew up either watching or just seeing, and, you know, I don't always appreciate things as a 24 and 3 quarter year old on the same level as I did when I was a 10 year old. But I'm so happy when I revisit something and I'm able to come away from it and say, oh, yeah, that was pretty good. Ben 10 was pretty good. Ben 10 is an American cartoon which originally aired on Cartoon Network in 2006. Ben 10 is 10 and in 2006, I was 10. Whoa, cool. The show is about Ben Tennyson who's spending the summer on a cross country road trip with his grandpa Max and his cousin Gwen. Ben witnesses something fall from space only for it to be an alien made device which permanently straps itself on Ben's wrist, giving him the power to genetically transform into 10 different super powered aliens. All you do is press this button. Then when the ring pops up, just twist it until you see the guy you want to be. Slam it down and bam! You're one of 10 super cool alien dudes! Ben, Gwen, and Grandpa travel across the country while using Ben's powers to stop crime and evade a number of weird aliens and weird alien robots who aim to kill Ben and take the watch. Ben 10 is a show that really grew on me as it continued to go on. I didn't love it from the first episode, but by the time the finale aired, I was totally on the hype train. I liked Ben, Gwen, Grandpa, Forearms, I just thought it was cool and that enthusiasm for the series continued on through while I watched the sequel series Ben 10 Alien Force, which I did follow through while it was airing until the end. I didn't watch the other two sequel shows or the reboot and unlike things like Avatar The Last Airbender, I haven't gone back to rewatch it at all. But you know, revisiting it, it's simply just a really fun and charming show with an engaging storyline that unfolds throughout its 51 episodes. So let's watch Ben 10 and appreciate it for the classic show it is. Special thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Raycon has been disrupting the premium true wireless earbud market by offering premium true wireless earbuds for half the cost of other high quality earbuds. I've been consuming a whole lot more audio content recently. I find it much less stressful to keep up with current events and news about gaming and entertainment through audio rather than video or, you know, constantly refreshing my news feed throughout the day. Especially if I'm consuming this content while I'm out for my little walk for the day. My little walk for the day is necessary keeps the bad feelings at bay for a few more hours. And with six hours of playtime on this battery, it doesn't matter that most days I forget to charge it the night before. Raycon is all about the customer experience from start to finish with a wide range of fun colors and patterns alongside custom fit options for a comfortable noise isolating fit and a 45 day free return policy. Raycon is all about fitting your needs every day, baby. So help out the channel by going to buyraycon.com slash billium to get 15% off of your first order. Thank you again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Ben 10 was conceptualized and written by creative group Man of Action, an entertainment company founded by comic book writers Joe Casey, Joe Kelly, Duncan Rello, and Stephen T. Siegel. Man of Action specializes in writing action stories. Other than Ben 10, they also worked on Generator Rex, the Bakugan reboot, and they'll be working on the upcoming Sonic Prime show on Netflix. Early concepts for Ben 10 showed a young boy with a pretty standard looking wristwatch, which could turn into 10 different super powered heroes, but slowly and surely the concept shifted away from humans to creatures and humanoid aliens. But ultimately, they went with the creative choice to make all the different transformations aliens with unique different body plans. In the first episode, we meet Ben Tennyson. He's 10 years old and has the heart of a hero, but he's a little twerp, so he gets beat up instead. Damn, dude, sucks that you can't, like, turn into some sort of big monster with four huge arms and beat the sh out of those 11-year-olds. Meanwhile, in space, the piece of technology at the center of an intergalactic conflict has been sent to Earth in an attempt to prevent it from falling into the hands of the evil Vilgax. A real comic book space warlord Thanos, but with a squid on his head type. He's the big bad guy, like nine feet tall, but he gets a little f***ed up in episode one. So he's got to send some robots down to Earth to retrieve the Omnitrix, which is horrible because that robot took some alien's job. Hey, I'm on fire and I'm okay. Check it out. I'm totally hot. Ben transforms into a few aliens and tells Grandpa and Gwen about the robots. Grandpa's acting a little sus. He's gonna stay a monster forever? He's not a monster. He's an alien. Like maybe he knows what this is all about? I mean, look at him. However, the stars of the show, or rather the star of the show, is 10-year-old Ben 10 and his 10 different alien transformations, all of which retain his personality. 
this is what made Ben 10 cool. Sure, Danny Phantom was cool because he had, you know, ghost powers, but ghost powers was just one of Ben's 10 powers. He could just turn into ugly Danny Phantom anytime he wants. Ben 10's the cop-out answer when somebody asks you what superhero you'd want to be because he's like every single superhero conveniently in a watch. But like, yo, actually though, under the circumstances that I do get an opportunity to have superpowers, I'm not going to be above giving a cop-out answer. I will be Ben 10. There's Heat Blast, Wild Mutt, the hulking forearms, Rip Jaws, Diamond Head, Ghost Freak, Upgrade, who can take over computers and machinery, Gray Matter, a big brain with a little frame, The Fly, with the power to spit goo, Stink Fly, and the super fast XLR8. Accelerate, I get it. The aliens in Ben 10 are just so cool and it does so much world building right from the first episode. These aren't a bunch of random superheroes that Ben can turn into that are exclusive to him. These are alien species that exist somewhere out in space. Vilgax sends a bunch of bounty hunters to Earth to kill Ben and collect the watch, but one of them turns out to be a double agent working against Vilgax. You barely scratched the surface of its potential. Yeah, so what makes you such an expert? You're... me? Wrong. This blew my mind as a kid. That's Ben's guy. Ben can turn into him. Neat. I like this detail in season two. Ben is a child, so naturally some of his alien transformations look younger than other ones we see. Look at these older versions of Wild Mutt. Just horrendously disgusting. Please get that out of here. What are you doing? Science experiment. I'm trying to figure out which alien can hawk the best loogie. The aliens are all played by a variety of voice actors, but the cool thing is they're all playing Ben. But really, it's all in a day's work for... No way! A gold sumo slammer card! Where'd you get it? I've been searching all over for that! Ben can be a real brat, and his cockiness can absolutely be intolerably obnoxious. But I get why they want Ben to be this way. When Ben is acting like a brat, I just want to toss him into the trash compactor. But when it's the big, hulking, alien superhero, it's kind of funny. Yeah, well, you're not the boss of me. He wants to show off, goof off, and take advantage of the benefits of being a superhero and having superpowers. He's 10 years old, and I feel like it's a pretty good representation for how a lot of 10-year-olds would act given this power. We meet the different aliens slowly, a couple at a time throughout the first few episodes, because Ben can't just transform into whoever he wants when he wants. The watch has a 10-minute limit and a 10-minute cooldown time in between uses, so Ben is often left with only seconds left to do what he needs to do or finds himself in danger before the watch can be used again. <laughs> When Ben gets into a fight, usually he wants to go for the super strong forearms because like 90% of the problems he has in the show could be solved if he could just, you know, break the bad guy's face open. But the watch doesn't always do what Ben is trying to get it to do. Very frequently, he gets the wrong hero. Ugh, stupid watch. This really bugged me as a kid. I think I just wanted to see the cool action all the time, but I think it actually makes the show a whole lot more interesting. Ben often has to find a clever way to solve the situation in an often less than ideal scenario, which allows for really creative and fun solutions. The action in the show is always exciting. There's so much weight behind the bigger characters and they're always being clever with how to choreograph action in whatever environment they're in. Like here, Wild Mutt is inside a meat packing plant. He has to move around on these hooks hanging from the ceiling, but his weight keeps breaking them so he has to continue on moving. Well, the focus of the series is definitely Ben and his alien transformations. This was marketing a ton of toys after all. I think the grounded heart of the series comes from the relationship between Ben and Gwen and Grandpa Max. What is she doing here? Take it easy, dweeb. This wasn't my idea. Somebody convinced my mom that going camping for the summer would be a good experience for me. I thought it would be fun if your cousin came along with us this summer. Is that a problem? Ben and Gwen do not get along. In fact, they outwardly despise each other. While they both make jokes at each other's expense, he's always wandering away. Oh, we're considering getting a leash. Ben is nearly always the instigator. I think Gwen and Ben bickering can be charming sometimes. Like we don't share enough already. Oh, will you let it go? Only if you do first. Never. We'll then never plus one. But they don't always take the time to balance it out with wholesome family stuff, which is something that I think is really needed. While Ben and Gwen are always trying to get at each other's throats, they do care about each other. Ben, you can't run away from us. Don't tell me what I can or can't do. This is my fight, my weird watch, not yours. 
Yeah, but you're my weird cousin. Those few moments where we get to see them having fun together is really sweet, but these moments are so few and far between. I mean, I love this montage of them in a tourist trap town. They're just goofing around and being bored together. It's like the perfect family wholesomeness in this kind of dynamic. I remember running around with my cousins, you know, being bored when we were with our grandparents. It's just a really relatable moment. I wish there were more moments like this because it really works. But holding two together is retired plum Grandpa Max, the infinitely patient and loving angel who is just so happy he gets to spend the summer with his grandchildren. He knows Ben and Gwen don't get along, but he hopes by just being nice and having a good time over the summer, they'll eventually learn to enjoy each other's company. Uh, is this place great or what? Uh, I'll go with or what. Come on. What's more exciting than the world's biggest fishbowl? Um, everything? Episode episode, the gang travels around the United States in Grandpa's RV, the Rust Bucket, stopping at tourist traps, pit stops, and cities around the country while running into a variety of regular criminals, aliens, and alien criminals. I like a lot of the aliens and creatures in this show. I particularly like the Kraken, this dinosaur-looking guy, who they liked so much they introduce a second of the same species in the next episode, and this little small fella. I mean, just stocky. Look at him. Many of the episodes have a lesson for Ben to learn about his behavior, which is always stated at the beginning of an episode like a thesis statement. There is such a thing as taking a joke too far, you know. Remember to think out there, Ben. Don't just try to muscle it. Might isn't always right. How do you expect me to trust you if you keep misusing the watch? You don't have to do this all by yourself, you know. Ben starts getting acknowledgement for his work as a hero. People start noticing the weird aliens going around fighting crime and helping people. So often, Ben is offered rewards and Grandpa has to try to keep him humble. Ben is often in need of help or rescue, so Gwen and Grandpa have to come in to save him. Grandpa and Gwen help out. Grandpa is surprisingly strong, like, excuse me? Gwen is definitely a lot smarter than Ben, that's never in question, so she often has to help him problem solve. Ben transforms into Grey Matter at a water park and the Omnitrix gets wet and malfunctions, meaning he's stuck as Grey Matter. Ben's captured by this lab scientist who wants to study it and sell it to the secret organization. They call themselves the Organization, a well-financed secret society dedicated to collecting alien technology. Ah, uh, hey, when, when you've been around as long as I have, you pick up a few things. Max and Gwen gotta go rescue him. The whole episode, Ben is Grey Matter, which gives us time with an alien that could be perceived as kind of lame. Oh my god, but Grey Matter is pretty cool. But Ben can just be like a cocky little fuck sometimes, so he often has to go through the whole, you know, rigmarole of a character arc of learning how to accept, you know, that teamwork is valuable. Gwen and I can help. <laughs> it's funny, Grandpa. I'm out of here. This is the episode that made me draw the line and just... I, I was just upset with Ben after this one. We came to Chicago for the music festival. God, that is so not fair. Fair. This entire summer, we've gone where you wanted to go, Benjamin. Grandpa Max wants to go to this music festival in Chicago, but Ben doesn't want to be there. Be any ruder? Hey, if Grandpa doesn't care what I want to do, why should I care about his dumb Ben? Dude, what the actual heck? Grandpa tries not to lose his cool, and he does a good job. If I were Grandpa, I'd just... <laughs> ben 10 features a series of fun reoccurring villains, many of which just have delightfully bland names. There's Dr. Animo, the mad scientist who controls genetically mutated animals, a wizard named Hexlord, whose niece is Charmcaster, and Ben's arch nemesis with the most shitpost name there is, Kevin Eleven. Dude's name is Kevin E. Levin. God, I hate anime. Kevin Eleven is this bad kid Ben starts hanging out with while he's feeling rebellious one day. Gwen's just not having it today. We gotta go? Like now, Ben. Don't you mean you have to go? You're on your own. He has powers too. He, he can absorb and redistribute energy like electricity, but that also means he can absorb all 10 of Ben's powers. Wait, plus his own powers? That's 11. He has 11, but Kevin 11. But Schmelv 12, who has all 11 of Kevin's powers and a gun, can beat the shit out of both of them. Ben starts hanging with Kevin and they do some illegal things. Oh my God, he wants to steal a video game. 
They break into the warehouse to steal it. And oh my God, look at all this police presence. All for what? To protect corporate profit? Oh yeah, that all makes sense. When Kevin casually suggests he and Ben can redirect the train line to, you know, crash and murder the dozens of people on it, Ben draws the line. Which let's be clear, that's a real low bar for judging Ben as a good person. Grandpa is glad Ben chose to do the right thing, but not all is good. I'm sorry, Grandpa, for everything. I know you are. You're my grandson and nothing will ever change that. But my trust is something you'll have to earn back. This is how the episode ends and this always really stood out to me because I thought this would be a big turning point for Ben's character. Grandpa Max is usually so nice and many episodes end on a happier note even when the characters have been disagreeing with each other throughout the episode. But damn, he's really upset. Wonder what he's gonna be like in the next episode. Oh, everything goes back to normal, okay. While the family provides the setting, the core of the show is the J.J. Abrams patented style mystery box that is the Amish. The Amish is not some toy for your amusement. It's the most powerful weapon in the galaxy. The key to an epic battle between good and evil. Slowly, the show gives us information about it. We learn its name, that it's at the center of a big galactic war. It has this ridiculous power source inside of it. Like imagine an ocean of D batteries. Alongside the mystery with the watch is also the mystery of grandpa's awareness of all these paranormal and alien events that they keep running into. And his personal history with Vilgax. Vilgax is in the background of season one recovering from his injury, but we slowly hear about him too. Too. Ben 10 always unfolds its plot in fun ways. Ben first meets Vilgax during a fight with this criminal who Vilgax equipped with alien tech to allow them to psychically communicate with one another. Ben takes over the tech as upgrade, which allows Vilgax to finally speak with the user of the Omnitrix he's been sending so many goons after. When Grandpa learns Vilgax is coming after Ben, he's not gonna sit around and find out what Vilgax wants. We can't afford to attract attention right now. Ben gets kidnapped by Vilgax, so Grandpa and Gwen go on a rescue mission. Turns out Grandpa wasn't actually a plumber. He was a plumber. The name of a secret government organization like the X-Files who handles all the aliens. They drive to the secret plumber base hidden in Mount Rushmore to get a weapon to kill Vilgax and save Ben. What is this place and how do you know about that alien guy who's after Ben? Well, it's kind of complicated, but let's just say... I wasn't exactly your normal plumber before I retired. They drive the RV into the spaceship, rescue Ben, and blow up the spaceship, sending Vilgax into space. This ending is such a blast and so much fun. I can't help but to smile thinking about it and well, I smiled too while watching it. You hold the key to a power struggle. So ancient, so vast. It is beyond your feeble comprehension. While season one does a lot to establish the world, season two and beyond plays around a lot with expanding on what's established. They're always finding new and exciting ways for the Omnitrix to develop. Ben discovering a new alien is always cool. So what do you think he does? <gasps> For Cannonbolt, Wild Vine, the horror movie themed aliens, and the black and white quip spitting self cloning alien played by Rob Paulson. Ditto. Well, maybe your fun's over, but my fun is just starting. It's also such a treat to see how Ben will learn and use the new alien. Kevin returns and becomes this hideous, mutated version of all of Ben's aliens. Throughout season two, Ben keeps messing with the Omnitrix, and in the season finale, he ends up overriding the 10 minute restrictions put in place, unlocking Omnitrix God Mode. But he ends up resetting everything when he lets Vilgax and Kevin have the Omnitrix in exchange for Gwen's life. Something Ben doesn't have to think twice about, but of course, they get the Omnitrix back pretty quickly. Ben was definitely definitely OP in this episode, but in the next episode, the season three premiere, we get to see Ben's full potential. It's grandpa's 60th birthday, but Ben and Gwen are brought into the future by future Gwen, who has brought them there to help future Ben. Ben 10,000. Yeah, but how are you gonna beat Kevin 11 million? You ever thought of that? Turns out Ben is a jerk in the future. It's grandpa's 80th birthday and Ben doesn't wanna go hang out with him. God, it looks like Ben never changes. Ever. Future Gwen is like, Ben, can you help your future Ben not be a jerk? But she just sort of forgot that this Ben was a jerk now, too. I am such a jerk! But he's a jerk and he laughs and has fun about it. So future Ben realizes the errors of his way and uh, goes to see grandpa and also gives them a box to give to their grandpa. Oh, here. 
Take this. What is it? Something I should have gotten Grandpa 20 years ago. I... I mean, we got you a cake. Happy birthday, Grandpa. Oh my god, it's a, it's a cake for his birthday. I'm gonna cry. But I think the coolest Omnitrix development is when Ghost Freak breaks out. Early on, Ben makes comments about feeling weird when being Ghost Freak. And in this episode, the alien actually breaks out of the watch and Ben can no longer turn into him. I was never you. An ectoneurite's consciousness exists even in a few strands of DNA. When the sample was taken for the Omnitrix, I was trapped inside. <laughs> But at the same time, many of the lessons Ben learns about his behavior start to repeat themselves, meaning he's not really growing as a character. Can I have a piece of that? Sorry, chocolate's for superheroes only. More like super jerks only. Of course there's validity in using a main character's behavior to teach a lesson, but I think it's frustrating in Ben 10 because Ben 10 has a lot of serialized storytelling and it's kind of frustrating to watch the story progress. Meanwhile, Ben stagnates in his growth. The lesson with Ben thinking he's the only useful one gets particularly annoying when Grandpa starts gearing up with the plumber gear again and as Gwen continues to learn magic. In this superhero world, Ben is no longer the only one with abilities. In season one, Gwen gets a lucky charm from Hexlord, and she turns into a superhero called Lucky Girl. She gives up her powers, which is really kind of lame because there's no reason why she should. But later she finds a spell book and starts experimenting with magic, giving her more exciting things to do in the action sequences. Well, here goes nothing. Which I like quite a bit. And then there's this new layer of uncovering Grandpa's history with the plumbers. He fought Vilgax, like not only regular fight, but he like strapped him to a nuclear bomb and, you know, sent them up and... Grandpa is still cool, but Grandpa was really cool. Don't you ever regret not being the first man on the moon? I just took my leaps for mankind in other ways. We know that Grandpa's been to space. I never said I didn't go into space. I said I never went into space with NASA. But uh, what does he mean here by taking other leaps for mankind? You know the alien that landed in Roswell? Well, Grandpa, he f***ed that alien. But we'll always have Roswell. That is what he means. In the meantime, you'll be our guest. We'll use the time to catch up. So you guys don't mind cleaning up, do you? Damn! He still got it. Although it wasn't technically the last episode to air, the series has a finale TV movie, Ben 10, The Secret of the Omnitrix, a four episode length adventure through space as Ben and Gwen accompany Tetrax, the crystal dude from before, across the galaxy to find Azmuth, the rumored inventor of the Omnitrix, to prevent the Omnitrix's universe ending self-destruct sequence that Ben accidentally activated. But meanwhile, they're being chased by Vilgax, who wants the Omnitrix, cause he never stopped wanting it from the last time we saw him. Him. It sort of feels like they were waiting for the finale to have Ben's character grow. He definitely needs to accept that Gwen is someone he cares about and brings value to his life and as a teammate. Ben thinks Gwen dies and realizes he actually needs her, but then she doesn't die. So hopefully this time that lesson will stick for Ben finally, but I don't have faith in him because this is the 10th time he's learned this lesson. This isn't even the first time he thought somebody died. Grandpa turned into this hideous slug monster. They think this is it. They think their grandpa's just a slug now. He's dead for all Ben knows. There's no bringing grandpa back from this. I also think they focus on the wrong part of Ben's character for the finale. Tetrax thinks Ben is only being a hero for the thrill of it and not because he actually wants to help people. We see at the beginning of the series that Ben does want to help people even without the watch. And we see Ben is willing to give up the watch without a second thought to save Gwen. So to me, this character arc really only reads as Ben feeling the need to prove himself to Tetrax, who was like dunking on Ben when they first met earlier. I am a noble warrior. 
you are an impulsive annoyance. I just want to make it clear that a lot of the time when I'm talking about Ben's character, that doesn't mean I'm not enjoying the show. This finale movie is exciting and fun and great, just like the season one finale. And I feel that way about a lot of the show. I really enjoy Ben 10, that's not the question. I just gotta find something to talk about in this video, don't I? So he meets Azmuth and defeats Vilgax at the end with the use of a new hero. Vilgax is nine feet tall, well, this guy's 11 feet tall. See you later, Vilgax. I think the line of thought with Ben as a character was that it's funny and entertaining to see the cocky juvenile hero. And I do agree with that a lot. But I think there was a maturation needed on the meanness aspect, at least for the character. And while we do see Ben grow and mature in the sequel series, that show abandons the heartwarming road trip with grandpa format. And although I remember really liking Alien Force, I wish we got to see him grow and change more meaningfully throughout the course of the original show because I do want to see Ben learn to be appreciative and outwardly caring toward Gwen and Grandpa, and not just as a result of him learning a lesson at the end of the episode. But this isn't where Ben 10 ends. There's like 10 other Ben 10 shows. There's like four others that I'm gonna talk about, uh, along with the live action movies. Yeah, so I'm gonna get to those next, and uh, I'm not looking forward to that one. So yeah, I'm tired, I'm stressed. I'll see you soon.